In the last 25 years, change management has become a hot topic. As a result, there are many approaches to managing change. Some are, of course, better than others. Here, we'll learn about four of the most prominent approaches, including Lewin's three-step model, Cotter's eight-step plan, action research, and organizational development. Let's look at how organizational change happens by reviewing one of the most referenced models of change, Kurt Lewin's model. It highlights the importance of preparing for change and then taking steps to sustain it after it's been implemented. According to Lewin, change should follow three basic steps. Unfreezing the status quo, moving to a new state, and then refreezing. Let's look at each of these steps in more detail. The first stage of Lewin's change model is unfreezing. In this stage, the organization's readiness for change is evaluated using what we call force field analysis, and then plans can be prepared. In the context of our desired state of the organization, driving forces are the things that motivate and encourage change, moving it forward. Resisting forces prevent change from happening and create pushback. By understanding these driving forces and resisting forces, we can make better plans and accelerate the change. We can strengthen driving forces and weaken resisting forces. To evaluate driving forces, ask how might we speed up this change and what things might help us implement this change. To evaluate resisting forces, ask what is preventing this change from happening. The second stage of Lewin's model is movement or changing, where the change is actually implemented and monitored. For more details about what we should do during this stage, we will review Cotter's model next. The third stage is refreezing. At this point, the change is complete and the change agents begin to put measures in place to make sure it sticks. Without this last step, the change may be short-lived, temporary, and people may return to the old ways of doing things. The value of the refreezing stage cannot be underestimated, yet it often is in real organizations. While these three steps are well supported by research, they are very general. What if we're leading a change? What specific steps can we take? Now we'll turn our attention to Cotter's model. 